Hello and welcome to this week's Productivity Enhancer. Today we're going to look at sketch-driven patterns and how they can be used in conjunction with the whole wizard. A classic example of where this would be useful is if we have this bracket here and say that this bracket houses another piece of metal from a different part and there are bolts coming through the top that drill straight through and bolt on the bottom. Well, we may not be sure exactly where those holes should go until we're further down the design process. So to make our lives easier, we can create the holes on the top using, say, a counter bore, and we can create the holes on the bottom by using that sketch-driven pattern. So let's take a look at how this works, and more importantly, take a look at how you don't want to do this so you can avoid this problem in the future. So we're just going to go, up, go ahead and grab our top view, get our hole wizard, and we're just going to use the standard counter bore here. And let's just go ahead and position them on this face here. One two, three, four, maybe start with just six holes. And before we accept this, uh, yep, I just wanted to make sure that this is up to next instead of through all. Glad I got that now. So we'll accept that and that way it won't go all the way through. And we can spin this around and take a look. It's just on our top face. So next we need to make the holes on the bottom side of this part that go all the way through. So let's go back to our hole wizard. This time we're just going to select the standard hole and we'll make sure that our diameter is set to five millimeters. And now when we position these, we'll grab this face and we can select right in the center. So by placing these holes in the center, you can see that it's creating relations uh, with the counterboard hole on top. And that's okay for now, but we will see where that runs into a problem for us. So once we have those holes, we'll accept them. And now you can see that our holes go all the way through with relations linking each individual bottom hole to each individual top counterboard hole. Now even without doing our sketch driven pattern up to this point, we're pretty good and we still have a lot of flexibility. Say for instance we want to edit the sketch that created the original counterbore holes and uh, we can move these holes anywhere. And by doing that, the holes underneath should automatically realign to those new positions. So let's exit the sketch and as you can see, our holes have realigned on the bottom to where we position them on the top. So what happens if we go back in and edit that sketch and decide that we only need five holes? Let's go ahead and delete that one and exit the sketch. Let's see what happens. Well, that's not going to be okay because the sketch contains dimensions or relations to model geometry which no longer exists. What that's saying is that this hole on the bottom here, it was a child to the parent that was this seabore hole that we just deleted. So in order to fix this, we have to close this go into this sketch and edit this sketch and delete this one point and then once we exit the sketch everything is back to normal however that's another extra step that you probably don't want to do so the better way to do this is uh, first of all we need to get rid of some of these sketch entities on the bottom here so let's just go ahead and delete everything except for one so now we have our five remaining counter bore holes with just the one hole that goes all the way through as our clearance hole. So now we can find out how our sketch driven pattern is really going to help us out in this instance. So if we go up to patterns, sketch driven pattern, and for our reference point we're going to want sketch 3. Our features to pattern is going to be this hole right here and then once we accept it you can see that all of those holes show up once again. Now if we want to edit this sketch further it'll be a breeze. We can add more holes We can delete existing ones. And when we exit the sketch, all of those holes will be propagated perfectly with our clearance holes on the bottom lining up with the holes on top. So editing the amount of holes and the placement of those holes becomes supremely easy as long as any changes you make come from editing the original sketch. So the sketch driven pattern can be used in this instance and many, many more instances. However, the next time you have to design a part with holes on the top and bottom of a part, like a bracket, then the sketch driven pattern is probably going to save you a lot of time if you're not exactly sure of the placement or the number of holes that you need. So thanks for watching this week's Productivity Enhancer. Until next time.